What's up, YouTube? Mentored one here. I'm going to demonstrate a, a really nerdy scientific type of program here called Darwin Pond. Uh, it's an evolution simulation lab. Not really a game, definitely more of a simulator. It's been out for a little while. I uh, haven't seen too much as far as uh, videos or demos or tutorials on it, and uh, it's really interesting. So I'm going to uh, show you what it can do and uh, maybe run an experiment, uh, capture bits of footage and show it back as like a time lapse type of thing. Uh, give you a brief overview here. This is the general interface. It runs full screen or window. I prefer window so you can minimize it to the taskbar and it'll actually run in the background on the taskbar so when you set up an experiment you can let it run for hours, however long you use in your computer. And um, what happens is it creates little creatures called swimmers that move around. They're like worms. They can be one-legged or multi-legged and they evolve they uh, they move they eat they reproduce and um, you know they live they die and they you can have species and families and all kinds of stuff that evolve over time to, and the one that's the best suited to the environment will win uh, there's a whole bunch of tools down here and you can hover over them to find out what they do and we'll kind of demonstrate them as we go along um, one of the things you're going to want to look at right away if you go to pond you can load up some sample ponds or empty ponds to play around with um, and options. You can go to um, free simulation. It'll stop all life and movement and time in the pond in case you need to make changes and you don't want anything to get messed up. Uh, if you go to preferences, uh, you can make a movie, time-lapse movie, but it's just colored dots. It doesn't really capture what's going on. All right, and that's where you go full screen or window down there. Okay, but the big thing here is to tweak ecology under options. And here you can play with how fast the food grows, how far the food spreads when it grows, um, and uh, characteristics of the creatures, how much energy their offspring has, how much energy they get from eating, how much they eat, and how long they live. And you can play, these are all just sliders you can play with to do different experiments. You can change them in the middle of an experiment. I mean, it looks like uh, not a lot, but really there's so many options here that you can do while you're running an experiment. It's really crazy. We're going to leave everything in the middle, though, for the demonstration. And these tools are, uh, this is just your standard selection tool. This allows you to drop food in, which will then spread like algae type of thing. Uh, zoom in and out. And this first one here allows you to create a random creature. This allows you to destroy a creature. And you'll see a tooltip will pop up when you hover over it. This allows you to play with a, a creature's genetics to modify all the aspects of it. We'll show that later. This allows you to clone a creature. And this allows you to mutate. We can you know, randomly tweak all the genes in a creature. And this will give you info. Now these test tubes down here are pretty interesting. If you click on the top button, it'll bring up a list of creatures you've saved. Like we'll click on the fire rower, one of the ones I saved from the previous experiment. And it'll load that creature in the tube, and then you can just drag and drop them into your experiment. So it allows you to save and share creatures between experiments, and here you can see the creature swimming around. And they learn different types of locomotion best suited for them. And um, they'll, they'll prefer mates that have the same color, the same number of limbs. And uh, that's how they'll find mates to reproduce. And he's looking for food and looking for mates. You know, he's munching on some food. And uh, if you want to save a creature at any point in time, you click on the arrow button and you just drag him into a tube and drop him. And then when he's in the tube, you click on this arrow to export. And you save it and what name it, whatever you want. It'll save the file so you can reload it, you know, share it with other people, etc. A pretty nifty little tool to have in an experiment program. This could be able to save creatures. So we're going to click on the kill creature button because I don't want to use a pre-existing creature. And we'll zoom back out. That's the general interface. Uh, we'll get into more of the buttons as we go along. I just wanted to give you a brief overview. So I'm going to set up an experiment and um, let it run and come back and record clips from it periodically and put it together in a long movie so you can see over the long term what it looks like. Um, and it, time goes by here, it's like a hundred time ticks for every second of real time or something like that. But it's obviously, uh, you know, different time for these tiny creatures who don't live very long. Um, so we'll set up the experiment now. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go to this first button to create a random swimmer, okay? Um, and I'm gonna freeze the simulation and we're gonna create 
a group in the middle and then a group in the corners and maybe scatter a few here and there and then we'll see you know what happens so what do we say we'll put like put like eight creatures in each corner Sixteen in the middle, and then we'll put like little groups of fours. And maybe we'll put a few pairs in between, like so. Now that may seem like a lot, but since we're randomly generating swimmers, it's all random genes. Most of them are going to die off. I would actually be surprised if we have any hardy survivors that emerge from this, you know, cesspool of genetic random creatures but we'll uh we'll, we'll unfreeze it and we'll take our magnifying glass we'll zoom into the middle here as you can see um there's not really anybody that's standing up that's moving very well there's some serious locomotion problems going on here see all these multi-limbed freaks everywhere you got this dude swimming backwards This guy's moving pretty good here. I mean, better than most, anyway. Still some issues with turning, obviously. So that's not looking too promising there. But again, whoever finds the food and reproduces, you know, all it takes is one strong guy to pass on his genes. Uh, most of the time, and uh, I'm not sure how the genes work, but um, there's definitely certain ones that are carried over and some creatures will have a very strong sort of genetic predisposition where they'll always pass on their genes no matter what kind of creature they mate with their offspring will always look like them and there are others who have like passive genes who the genes will always look like the one they mate with rather than themselves so there's a lot of variabilities now if i remember correctly the gene file is like um I don't know, it's like a 10 decimal place number, and there's 16 of them, 16 different genes, and each gene has like 10 digits to it uh, that are all variances that regard movement, um, color, mating preference, you know, swimming speed, angles. Now I'll show you uh, while we're looking at these freaks of nature here. We'll zoom into one and we'll, we'll click on this one. That's a syringe. All right, we'll click on this dude who's swimming backwards. And that brings up the, the window where you can play with their genes. And now you can just, I don't, I'm not sure what all of these do. They just kind of, they kind of label them like turning gene, how well they turn, um, colors, you know, joint angles, number of limbs. You know, like if you take that up, you can give them three or four limbs. You keep them with two, and as segments per limb, you can make the limb shorter or longer. Um, the rate, the amplitude, the limb flip, the straddling, like, you know, straddling, you know, it looks like it separates the legs a little bit. I'm not, again, I'm not sure. You kinda, I kind of just play with these until it looks like something resembling some sort of uh, legitimate movement is emerging. Oh, looks like we might have something there. Now I'll click over here to make him turn and see what happens. So you can click on a spot and they'll face, he's not turning very well in that direction. Let's turn this gene slider a little bit and see what happens. Oh, that's all messed up now. Now the thing is, when you stop mucking with genetics, you're interfering with uh, the evolution of your little creature, so it depends on how you want to play it. Do you want to play God and try to manufacture all these life forms? Do you want to let it evolve on its own? I don't think I helped this guy at all, so I'm not too worried about that.
Oof, see, all of them do different things, so you just have to kind of experiment and see what you can come up with. So we'll just uh, we'll just accept that. I'm gonna I'm gonna make him a solid purple. There we go. All right, so we have our pond set up here. And uh, I don't expect too many of these to live. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna pause it here and uh, let it run for a while. We're at sixty-five thousand ticks, so I will get back to you and uh, see what happens with these freaks of nature that we set up here.